Hey, I'm Tom and welcome back to the Shaw Whiteboard series. Today's topic is RF or radio frequency cables. RF cables are an often overlooked part of the whole RF setup. So you've got your right kit, you've got your right frequencies, you've tuned it up all good, you've placed your antennas in the right place, but it's very, very, very easy to shoot yourself in the foot by selecting the wrong antenna cables. The reason you use antenna cables is perhaps when your radio receive rack is too far away from the actual performance area, so you need to get some cable length in there, or in, in addition, you might have in an installation, for example, a metal rack, and placing the antennas in the back of the rack behind all the equipment in a metal rack is only gonna result in poor performance, hence the need for uh, RF cables. RF cables are quite different to audio cables, as in audio cables we can run cables for a long, long, long distance without actually inducing much loss at all. RF cables are relatively lossy by comparison. The amount of loss you get inside of a cable will be dependent on three different things. Firstly, the build quality of the cable. Secondly, the frequency at which you're currently trying to transmit. And thirdly, the length of the cable. The impedance of all of the components inside of a radio system should really be the same. This comprises the antenna, the cables, the connectors and the inputs to the RF stage of the radio receiver. The one that's most likely to fluctuate in impedance is the cable. So the antenna cable we use for our radio systems is usually coax cable with a nice BNC connector on the end. Now there's another industry that also uses coax cable with a BNC connector on the end and that's the video. Uh, systems. These guys tend to use a cable with an impedance of 75 ohm, where we use 50 ohm cable. If you start to use their video cable for a big long radio runs, you're going to get very little signal at all, so please do pay attention to the kind of impedance we're using. I'll now show you how we can gauge how much loss we're going to get in a certain type of cable. So let's say our radio microphone kicks out 10 milliwatts of RF power and let's also assume in this example that there's no path loss, i.e. the position from the transmitter to the antenna doesn't lose any signal at all. So our antenna is seeing all 10 milliwatts. Now in an RF cable, 3 dB loss is going to uh, result in a signal quality of half of what it was before. So if the antenna was seeing all 10 milliwatts, if we used RG58 cable, we're gonna have 5.2 dB of loss. So the first three dB would take the 10 milliwatts down to five, and the remaining 2.2 dB would take the five down to approximately three. That's quite a lot of loss. If we then compare that to the RG213, we've only got 1.9 dB of loss. Still a bit of loss, but not too bad. So our 10 milliwatts would go down to approximately seven or so, so significantly better than it was before. So ideally, within our RF system, we would have no loss whatsoever, i.e. zero path loss. And we need to compensate for the loss induced in the cable by using either an active antenna or a booster. This usually comprises of some active circuitry that's powered from the receiver or your distribution unit and allows you to add anywhere between zero or maybe up to 12 dB of gain. For more information about this topic and other topics, please feel free to come to one of our wireless master sessions or maybe one of our wireless workbench masterclasses. And to keep up to date with the next instalments of the Shaw Whiteboard series, make sure you register and subscribe at losingyourvoice.co.uk.